Joseph Goebbels was a German politician and Reich Minister of Propaganda of Nazi Germany from 1933 to 1945. He was a close ally of German dictator Adolf Hitler and played a key role in the Nazi regime's propaganda efforts, which were aimed at consolidating the regime's power, perpetuating anti-Semitic ideology, and promoting aggressive war. Goebbels' use of propaganda was instrumental in the Nazis' consolidation of power and the spread of their hateful ideology. He was also one of Hitler's closest confidants and played a major role in the planning and execution of the Holocaust. After Hitler's death, Goebbels served as Chancellor of Germany for a brief period before taking his own life in Berlin in 1945. He used propaganda techniques to spread Nazi ideology and control public opinion in Nazi Germany. After the war, US Army discovered a very large diary dictated by Goebbels. In that document, his principles of propaganda was written. First principle, propagandists must have access to intelligence concerning events and public opinion. Second principle, propaganda must be planned and executed by only one authority. It must issue all the propaganda directives. It must explain propaganda directives to important officials and maintain their morale. It must oversee other agencies' activities which have propaganda consequences. Third principle, the propaganda consequences of an action must be considered in planning that action. Fourth principle, propaganda must affect the enemy's policy and actions. By suppressing propagandistically desirable material which can provide the enemy with useful intelligence. By openly disseminating propaganda whose contents or tone causes the enemy to draw the desired conclusions. By goading the enemy into revealing vital information about himself. By making no reference to a desired enemy activity when any reference would discredit that activity. Fifth principle, declassified, operational information must be available to implement a propaganda campaign. Sixth principle, to be perceived, propaganda must evoke the interest of an audience and must be transmitted through an attention-getting medium. Seventh principle, credibility alone must determine whether propaganda output should be true or false. Eighth principle, the purpose, content, and effectiveness of enemy propaganda, the strength and effects of an expose, and the nature of current propaganda campaigns determine whether enemy propaganda should be ignored or refuted. Ninth principle, credibility, intelligence, and the possible effects of communicating determine whether propaganda materials should be censored. Tenth principle, material from enemy propaganda may be utilized in operations when it helps diminish that enemy's prestige or lend support to the propagandist's own objective. Eleventh principle, black rather than white propaganda must be employed when the latter is less credible or produces undesirable effects. Twelfth principle, propaganda may be facilitated by leaders with prestige. Thirteenth principle, propaganda must be carefully timed. The communication must reach the audience ahead of competing propaganda. A propaganda campaign must begin at the optimum moment. A propaganda theme must be repeated, but not beyond some point of diminishing effectiveness. Fourteenth principle, propaganda must label events and people with distinctive phrases or slogans. They must evoke responses which the audience previously possesses. They must be capable of being easily learned. They must be utilized again and again, but only in appropriate situations. They must be boomerang proof. Fifteenth principle, propaganda to the home front must prevent the raising of false hopes which can be blasted by future events. Sixteenth principle, Propaganda to the home front must create an optimum anxiety level. Propaganda must reinforce anxiety concerning the consequences of defeat. Propaganda must diminish anxiety which is too high and cannot be reduced by people themselves. Seventeenth principle, propaganda to the home front must diminish the impact of frustration. Inevitable frustrations must be anticipated. Inevitable frustrations must be placed in perspective. Eighteenth principle, propaganda must facilitate the displacement of aggression by specifying the targets for hatred. 19th principle, propaganda cannot immediately affect strong counter-tendencies, instead it must offer some form of action or diversion, or both. Joseph Goebbels' propaganda had an impact during his time as Nazi Germany's Minister of Propaganda. It helped to spread the ideology of the Nazi party, generate support for their policies, and demonize their opponents. However, it's worth noting that propaganda alone cannot sustain a regime, and the ultimate failure of the Nazi regime suggests that it was not a completely effective tool in the long run.